ah. Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, the original YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to Studio B. Now in a recent video, what is it? I talked about this and we identified the fact that this is a Johansson Commander multiple spindle drill attachment so you can drill two holes at a time on a regular drill press for production or speed up uh, pur purposes. You know, if drilling one hole is good, drilling two holes at the same time is even better. Now, you're never going to need one of these or want one of these. It's, uh, it's for factories and for production. But let's see how it works. So I'm going to set this up and we're going to drill a couple holes. We'll talk about how it works and I think I'll even take it apart. But I'll do that at the end just in case I'm not in the mood for ever putting it back together and I just plain throw the thing away. I recently bought this at Arnfest. I think I mentioned that. It's kind of a unique tool. I have used these in factories. I have never owned one. This would be very... I, let me know. I've 800 bucks? Thousand dollars for something like this, I suppose? I paid a lot less or I wouldn't be throwing it away. So, before we begin the uh, rather long video here, uh, be sure and watch and I'll flash it on the screen now, my latest auction video in the fall of 2023. It's a very long video, but I think you're going to love it. I, I just got some straight th great things. So, all right, I'll flash that on the screen right now, and then we'll start on this. I did a little research on these, and this company is no longer in business, but it is... It was bought out, as all companies are, and it's, I think, called just Commander. Maybe I'll put, uh, I'll tell you the website if you would want to look at that. Now, they made a lot of different models, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 10s. Some are gear-driven like this, and it'll be interesting to see inside of this, but others are driven by little drive shafts and U-joints and so on if they're going to cluster 6 or 8 holes close together. Now this particular one, we can drill holes as close together as uh, I think it was inch and a quarter or inch and a half. And these can be adjusted obviously and tightened and a maximum of four inches. Now I think I'll wait till the end of the video and I'm, I'm going to show you some uh, stills of uh, the company that makes these and the various products including this one but it has quite a different design now such that these two spindles can be brought closer together so that you can drill two holes I think within about a half inch of each other now when I finally put this on a drill press and start drilling I'm just going to drill into aluminum or even wood but normally in a production setting they would quite often be used with uh, a drill jig and drill bushings and so on to accurately locate the hole because when drilling two holes like this offhand you they might drift on you a little bit depends on the accuracy that would be needed for the product. Now just to give you a general idea of how these work on any drill press and there are adapters to make it fit yours. First of all, you would take off this bracket here that has the depth stop. I'm not sure what you call that. And then it would go right over the chuck as I'm going to do with a special driver. Or it may have a driver made specifically for this, which I'll show you here in just a second. And it moves, of course, up and down with the quill. And I'll show you that better out in Studio G when we get ready to drill. Now this unit has to be driven by the drill press motor. So when we look down into the bore here, can you see that little uh, adapter down there with a slot in it? That's what drives it. Now when I bought it, the man told me, the seller told me that this was the quill out of a Delta drill press. You can see the rack. You can see the uh, keyways here that drove it. Usually there's a spline here. 
But on the end of it here, and I, I'm not sure how this adapter is held onto the quill, but you can see this lug here. Well, how am I going to drive it? Well, I just took the dimensions off of this. No big deal. And I made this little adapter here that will fit down into that slot. Now, I didn't know how long to make this, so I started out with a 6 inch and kept chopping it off until it, <laughs> it became the correct size. And then I'm simply going to hold it. Where did I put that chuck? I'm simply going to hold it in a Jacob's chuck in my Duro drill press like that, tighten it down, and this entire chuck will fit down in there. And when it, I line up with the slot, then I can feel it. Naturally, I'm not going to be able to do that with an audience. There, I got it. So that's what it's doing. When you order one of these, the instruction says tell them exactly what drill press model and brand that you're using and they will adapt it to fit. So this clamping bolt here is what holds it onto the quill, but you can see this was equipped with an adapter, which I'm glad it was because this fits my Duro drill press, but that would fit some other size, and I suppose they would provide whatever you needed for that. So when you tighten down the screw and make sure that this is oriented with the two slots together, I think, that's the way I'm doing it anyway, then you can tighten it down and it's not going to move on you, and your depth stop goes through this hole. Pretty neat. All right, let's start setting it up, but first let me show you this. Maybe I should have saved this for later, but when we take that nut off, you can see that there is a little gear in there. Right on this spindle, and it mates up with another gear which appears to be the same size. And that's how the power is transmitted to the drill. Even when I bought this, I thought, you know, if I ever use this, how the heck am I going to hold a drill in here? Because it's obvious that there are no collets or adapters or whatever is used. None were included. So I thought, and I thought, well, it, it, ultimately what I did was to take a piece of uh, stock, and it's an odd size. I had to turn it down to whatever fit in there. I don't remember what it was, or care. And then I silver soldered. Well, this was a waste because I wanted to save a minute and I didn't ream the hole. I just drilled, a th these are 3 sixteenths. I just drilled a 3 sixteenths hole and of course by the time I silver soldered it just wobbled so bad and naturally I had to do, do two more of them and, and I reamed the hole so, so it's much better. And notice how I have cut, this is a red one, this is a silver one. And everything that I do is marked. It is, I can't. Where the heck's the mark? Well, there's the white one. I don't know what happened to the mark. I probably used fingernail polish over grease. You think I'd know by now. So, <laughs> anyway, I will go ahead now and put that in there and fasten it with a roll pin. Now, is that any good? Eh, good enough for the demonstration. And I don't know where you would get collars, but they would be pretty expensive if I even found them. And I suppose you'd need hundreds of different sizes depending on whether you're using number drills or fractional or letter or metric. Well, these nuts here really serve no purpose, but I'm going to put them on there to protect the threads. Now let's talk about how I'm going to go about adjusting these for an inch and a half hole. That is, I should say, to drill two holes that are exactly an inch and a half apart. Take a look at how I'm going to do that. I think I put a little grease on the gears and for best results use Derana AX multi-purpose shell grease. 
even though it's 70 years old, it will still work perfectly, won't it? And then assemble. And I'll just snug down the washer on the nut. Now remember I told you that we can adjust these anywhere between, I think I said inch and a half and four. I want inch and a half, so you know it could be done just with a ruler. Depends on how accurate you need it to be, but since they are one and a half inches apart, the radius of uh, each drill is you know half of 187, but or the diameter is 187, so I would set my calipers here for 187. I've already got this one pretty well snugged about where I want it. And I will tighten this. And it is now set for one and a half. Now there would be a setup man doing this in a factory, of course, because uh, he would have an unskilled operator such as Bubba's illegitimate son. But the setup man might well, as I told you, these are often used with jigs, he would set the, the jig up probably and it would be perfectly aligned with the drill bushings in the uh, drill jig. Well, actually this thing now is ready to do a little drilling, so let's go out into the other shop, drill a few holes just for the fun of it, then we'll come back down here, take this apart, and see how it's built, how it's constructed. Okay, I'm out in the other garage at the Duro drill press. I had to drop the table considerably because this unit takes up quite a bit of space, doesn't it? And I've already loosened the quill stop off of the quill and taken this off and just set it aside. That's how things get separated in a factory. And then I'm ready to mount the commander and chief. But first I'll put this into the chuck. I have already kind of determined how much it needs to stick out. Tighten that up real well. And now we'll struggle putting this thing on. All right, I'll see if I can get this thing on. Notice that there is a depth stop. It looks homemade, just a piece of threaded rod, but I won't really be using it anyway. But it goes on like this. And then I got to turn this until I feel the lug engage. Okay, and now I will tighten the bolt back here, which you can't see. This unit is heavy enough such that I'm not getting a rebound on the quill, so the spring would have to be tightened, but of course I have no intentions of doing that. Let's see how it runs. I'm protecting the table, of course, with a piece of wood. This is oak. Two for the price of one. This is pretty amazing. I'm 80 years old and have never used one of these. This is aluminum, let's see what happens. Now we should always clamp the work, but there is not that tendency for it to grab and spin 
because there are two of them working against one another, I guess. You know, my method of fastening the drill bits isn't the best. That one's pretty good, but that's kind of wobbly. Now I need two holes drilled in this eighth inch steel with three sixteenths, inch and a half apart. I know that it said it could only handle up to eighth inch in steel, but let's see what happens. Well, that worked admirably, didn't it? Let's have a closer look now. Obviously, one drill is touching the work before the other, but who cares? Now, imagine doing that with three, four, five, six spindles, six drills at the same time. Boy, would that speed things up. Now, if anyone is still with me, let's go back down to where it's warm and take this apart and see what the gears look like inside of the Commander. Did you like that little drilling demonstration? I was amazed by it, even though I've used things like that in the past. So let's look at the gears. I don't believe there's any oil in here that I need to worry about because I'm going to separate it right here. And there are four Philister head screws that I will take out real quickly. And, we, you know, it's going to be just simple gears, just kind of like what we got in here, isn't it? But we got to see what it looks like. I'm dying to know, and I think some of you are as well. Nothing there. Oh, I thought I'd be into the gearbox, but I'm not. But there's the lug that we talked about. Not a lug, it's a slot. And you didn't talk about it. I talked about it. Well, is it worth taking that apart? I guess I'll do it. I've come this far. Okay, when I take this flange off, that's an oil light bearing there, and a pretty good fit. And looking down in here, I thought I'd be able to see all the gears. I'm really surprised, but they're hidden except for the main drive gear. See if I can zoom in just a little bit. Don't worry, I'm going to take more apart. And you know, this really should have been a separate video, what makes it work. Well, this isn't a planetary system by any means, but we got the main gear in the middle. I'm going to call that a sun gear, <laughs> All the, even though it's not. But we got the large gear in the center, and then each one of the drive shafts going down to the drills is mounted on a smaller gear. Can you, can you see it there? So I'm going to see if I can get those out and see if I can pull. I don't know what holds this main gear in, but I'll struggle and get that off off camera. All right, that's a ball bearing right there with my finger touching it, so I had to drive this out, pull it out, I should say, and that little stub shaft there presses into that bearing, so I took it out. There's the gear and the driver, and you can see or can you? Let's have some light on the subject here. So there's a gear on each side and those gears of course connect down here. So let's pull one of these off and see what we got. We've done that already but it might be interesting and I believe these are just plugs or caps maybe to to close those holes. I don't know what purpose they serve offhand. All right, back on this side, let's pull off this little spindle with a gear. We've seen that already. And then this gear pulls off the shaft. You know, and what? this is interesting. It's not two gears. It's just one long gear packed with grease. Let me clean this up and I'll be back presently. All right, there it is. You can see it's just a long gear 
with an oil light bearing, so there's two of these. There would be more in uh, some other models, of course. So the entire gear train here consists of this little gear on the actual spindle, the longer gear of the same diameter and pitch, but longer, and it is being driven by the large gear times two, of course. Quite clever. So I'll clean this up real well and I will uh, regrease it and oil those bearings. That ball bearing in here seems quite good. There's some hardened grease here. So you know it hasn't been greased since the day it was made in the, probably the 60s or 70s, but very well constructed, although I'm kind of surprised to see so many oil light bearings rather than ball bearings or needle bearings, but I think that's necessary to keep the price down and to keep it more compact because a ball bearing takes up a lot more room than a little sleeve oil light type of sintered bearing, does it not? Okay, I seated the big gear into the bearing and when we turn this clockwise, this gear is going counterclockwise, isn't it? So, since we wanted this drill to go clockwise, when this other spindle is put on with yet one more gear, that reverses the direction. So, in the final event here, both of these drills will be turning clockwise, won't they? This is a little extra credit. You might find interesting, but probably everybody knows this. But when I interviewed at Caterpillar, they had sketches and pulleys and gears and all different things like that. They wanted to know how mechanical you are or were. So when we only have one gear and it's rotating clockwise, you can see that the other one's counterclockwise. So in some cases, we have three gears in whatever the application is. That, and this might just be an idler gear to change the direction of rotation because now we got clockwise here, clockwise here, counterclockwise in the middle. Raise your hand if you did not know that. Well, that concludes this rather long video and I covered an awful lot of ground including what is it, what makes it work, how to use it, and more. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, give me a thumbs up, and I'll make more like this. And stay tuned for some still pictures, including some stills from Commander Johansson on some of their other models that may interest you. This is a Model 400, by the way, if I never did mention that. And some other videos, uh, clips, not clips, uh, stills that I took while I was doing this, and I hope you... Again, like this, and I will see you next time. So long for now. In October 2023, I went to my very last tool auction. It's a fabulous one. Be sure and watch this video. It's a long one. You will love it. This is my brother in Cody, Wyoming, about a year before he passed away. My brother was always incredibly messy, as you can see here. And I have often said that he absolutely refused to tilt the head on his vertical mill. In fact, one of his standard sayings was, I'd rather be dead than tilt the head.